Ellie De La Cruz is going to be impossible for opposing pitchers to deal with in 2024. I'm going to tell you why on today's Locked On Reds. You are Locked On Reds, your daily Cincinnati Reds podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You are Locked On Reds with myself, Jeff Carr. I am a lifelong Cincinnati Reds fan, and I've turned an addiction to this team and to information for you. I'm going on my sixth season hosting this podcast, hosting or co-hosting it in one way, shape, or form, and I love this Cincinnati Reds team. Happy to be bringing uh, my knowledge of this team to you, and I'm glad that you are part of today's show. Make sure, if you're watching here on YouTube, that you jump down in our comment section and let us know any old thing, really. I mean, any comment helps the algorithm, helps other people discover the show and things like that. Make sure you also like today's show. If you're on YouTube, if you're listening on your favorite podcast app, become an everydayer by subscribing on your favorite podcast app. On today's show, we are going to look at a couple of different things. Uh, we are three weeks away, officially, today, three weeks from today, opening day is happening. It is almost here, so close. So we're going to look at the best number 21 to ever do it. comes down to two guys. I think you know who I'm going to pick, but we'll save it for later on in the show. I'm also going to tell you why the 26th man, I think it's locked up. I, I think we know who it is. And I'm going to tell you why I think Stuart Fairchild is the guy. We're also going to make some bold predictions. Started the bold predictions yesterday with Steve. We're going to do another round of those today. And I have a bold prediction that he thinks is too bold. Be curious to see if you think it's too bold as well. And we're going to start off by talking about Ellie De La Cruz because, man, he had a day yesterday. And he just he had me thinking about a few things about him and this season as a whole. Before we get into all of that, though, I wanted to let you know that today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the app today and use the promo code Locked On to get twenty dollars off your first purchase. They've got the last-minute tickets at the lowest price, guaranteed. And where we're going to start off today is with Ellie De La Cruz. Ellie had a day yesterday, and look, I I, I don't want to get too into. I'm not going to say that the the line score that he had yesterday, the box score that he had. Uh, is going to be something that you can expect every single day in the regular season. I think it does show the imp- the, the the importance this offseason and this spring training that he has put on plate discipline. We've seen a better eye from Ellie. Is he swinging at some bad pitches? Sure. Is he striking out still a little bit? Yeah. But he's also taking walks. And there are some at-bats that he has had that he is working walks as though he is Joey Votto, that he and he is working walks as though this is something he has always done. It's not something he did a lot of last year. That was something that we were concerned about. The, the walk to strikeout ratio was way off. You needed to see him walk a lot more, at least you know cut down on the strikeouts. But if you're going to strike out, you know if you can limit or if you if you can balance that a little bit with the walks. That's a big thing, and and especially for Ellie, because Ellie can be just as dangerous earning a walk as pretty much any other player can by getting a hit. And in case in point, the perfect one for me was his final plate appearance yesterday. Yesterday, Ellie went one for one with two walks, three runs scored, and three stolen bases. There was a perfect encapsulation of this. I think it was in the fifth or the sixth inning. Uh, but he was he was facing, um, I believe it was Wandy Peralta as well, former Red, that is pitching for the San Diego Padres this year. But he walks, and he gets on first. Next pitch, steals second base. And it wasn't even really that close. He slid in head first, was able to slide in underneath the tag. But when you saw the replay, it wasn't even close. And then... He waits a few pitches. There's probably three or four pitches in between his next attempted steal. And he was all up in the head of the guy on the mound, Wandy Peralta. And then all of a sudden, he takes off for third. And when he chose to take off for third, I'm telling you what, he had the largest lead. He was able, he is so different from other base runners because of his height, because of his size. Because when he has a normal lead, if a pitcher is checking him, it's just like, okay, he's got a normal lead. 
All he's got to do is take like one stride and then he has the biggest lead you've ever seen. And he did that in this inning because he was able to get the biggest lead you've ever seen and the fastest jump. I swear he was out of the camera and halfway to third base by the time the catcher caught the ball. And there was no chance. They didn't even throw to third. They were like, nah, we ain't even going to try. Steals third without a throw. How many players do that? And then Tyler Stevenson bounced the ball to third base and the bounce was high enough and Ellie took off at, you know, first contact and he was able to score easily. Ellie can change the game with a walk more so than a lot of other players can with a hit. And we've talked about his plate discipline and how it needs to improve and how that's something that is a huge, uh, a huge deal for 2024 and mostly in terms of his batting average and his slugging percentage and things like that. But think of his on base percentage for a minute. Last year, it w- he scored over 50%. The number of times he got on base, he got on base about 126 times and he scored 67 runs. So he scored over 50% of the time that he got on base last year. That is a really good percentage. If he can keep that up, and then you also look at this, and again, we're not going to go too crazy. I'm not saying that the 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 batting average and the on-base percentage that he has in spring training is anything indicative of what he's going to have in the regular season, but if he can maintain the difference, that even though he has a very nice batting average right now for spring training statistics, he still has a difference in batting average and on-base percentage of 133 points. If he can just keep that difference in the regular season around 100 points, like we're talking, you know, maybe he's hitting 250, 260, but if he's getting on base 35, 36% of the time, oh, man, that's going to change things. That's the MVP stuff we're talking about. That's the kind of stuff, if Ellie can get on base 35, 36% of the time, or even better than that, That's going to go a long way. Might be the biggest single development on this team and go a long way into the Reds really having that special season that we believe they can get to. Because that means you put Ellie up at the top of the lineup and everybody else falls into place behind him. And you got these guys. Like yesterday, you even saw it on his earlier at-bats. He took a walk and then... Christian Encarnacion Strand just absolutely blasted a a home run. And then in a couple of innings after that, Ellie laced a single. That's really a laser into right field. Two batters later, Tyler Stevenson uncorks a home run. Ellie's on base for that homer as well. Ellie scored three times. It's very, very easy to see games that Ellie just gets on base and scores. With the way that this lineup is set up in the middle with boppers like CES, like Spencer Steer, like Jamer Candelario, Candelario, sorry. You can see those guys getting a lot of RBIs if Ellie can improve his plate discipline to the point where he is this on-base machine. I think we talk, and I get so excited about his power, and, and, and we we think of, you know, that ball had a family. We, that's the things that we think of when we think of Ellie, and we think of the speed and stealing home and all this stuff, but just the general, like, if he is on base, everything else is so much more difficult for the other team. So all he has to do is just take a walk. And, and the reason, like I said at the top of the show, the reason... He's going to be impossible for other pitchers to deal with this season is what do you do? If he is starting to track the curveball, which I'm starting to see that like some, some things that break it low and inside to him, he kind of, it looks like he's about to offer at it. And then he holds off. If he can really start to, to figure out the spin and, and see the spin and lay off the breaking pitches, he's not going to hit anyway. And you're forced to throw strikes to him then he's just going to uncork a a long home run on you. And then if you're worried about throwing strikes to him and that plate discipline really steps up like we think it can, then he's just going to be on base all the time. This is going to be so much fun. And days like yesterday, Wednesday be, days like Wednesday against the Padres, the way that Ellie played in that game, just absolutely indicative of what it can be for this dude 
if the plate discipline takes that next step. You know, yesterday we kicked off our bold predictions for 2024, and we'll continue that in here just a moment with one prediction that you might find to be too bold. We'll get to that here in just a moment. Before we get to that, though, I want to tell you about one of today's sponsors, and that is Amazon Fire TV. Fire TV is your destination for sports, from live games to highlights to in-depth analysis. Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs, as well as the Fire TV stick that you can plug into your existing TV that provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes, as well as free and live TV. Whether it's opening weekend for baseball or the college basketball tournament, you're going to want to have a Fire TV. Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands all for free. That includes all of us here at Locked On and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. Fire TV channels let you dive into all of the game analysis, highlights, and more to keep up to date on the latest in the world of sports like March Madness and the NBA's they're headed to the playoff stretch. Major League Baseball's opening day is, is looming and lots more. Not to mention great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, cooking videos as well. Check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should. Trust me on this. To learn more, visit www.amazon.com slash locked on Fire TV. Locked on, speaking of streaming, has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube Locked on Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, like myself and Steve, plus our national shows covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. And coming up on the next Locked On Reds podcast, Steve will be back with a special guest as I will actually be out. We kind of did this whole thing where Steve's work schedule got in the way of today's episode. So he's here with me in this next segment, but I'm back with you solo afterward. And then tomorrow for the Aloha Live Friday edition of the Locked On Reds podcast, Steve will be here with a special guest. You're not going to want to miss it. Make sure you join him tomorrow. And I believe he said it's going to be a little bit later on in the day, so Make sure you follow us on Twitter for those reactions. Follow Steve at S. Offenbaker with uh, two Fs there. All right, we started our bold predictions yesterday. We're going to continue them here right now today. I'm given one. Steve's given one yesterday. We gave you the bold prediction. Steve gave you the bold prediction that Matt McClain will start at second base for the NL in the All-Star game over Mookie Betts. I gave you that the Reds will not have a losing month in 2024 they will either be 500 or better every single month the point of bold predictions is that when you say them you go yeah maybe really i don't know like the idea is that this isn't just something they can fall into this isn't something that is likely this is something that everything has to go right and since you started off yesterday i'm going to start off today the reds for the first time since 2017 will have a six war player. The Reds have not had the Reds have not had a six war player since Joey Votto was robbed of the NL MVP in 2017. Some guy named Stanton that played for the Marlins and then absconded to the American league and the Yankees won it that year for some stupid reason. But Joey had a war over six. I think it was 6.1, according to fan graphs. I didn't look at what it was on baseball reference, but I was looking specifically at the fan graphs war calculation. They have not had a player hit six since 2017 and only, only three times in the last 12 years have the Reds had anybody go six or more. And it's Joey Votto twice and Shinsu Chu in 2013. So this is not something that happens very often. And quite honestly, I think it might be too bold, but I think they got, I am, I, I'm going to drill down on this a little bit. First off, I need to know, are you talking F war or B war? F war, F war, F war, yes. six war player. Okay. I don't have fan graphs in front of me. I know the highest B war player last year was TJ Friedel at 3.8. 
Do yeah. you want to maybe point us in the direction of who is going to give an MVP type season for six war? So, so again, everything has to go right, which means this guy gets the plate discipline, right? Because if the plate discipline is right for Ellie de la Cruz, everything else is going to be phenomenal. He's got all the power in the world. He's got all the speed in the world. He can play defense with the best of them because you got to do all those things to be a six win player. You can't, you can't be all or nothing on hitting and, and you can't, you can't field like you've got to be able to do everything. Ellie does everything. And if he gets that plate discipline, right again, it's a bold prediction for a reason. We don't know what his year is going to be like. I think Ellie could be that six win guy. I, I think you pushed past bold. Just, you might've overshot just a smidge. Um, look, I mean, don't get me wrong. If Ellie puts up a six war season, my God, I can't wait to book my flight to the world series parade. Um, that's just the <laughs> way that that's going to go. Um, and I, I will definitely be in town for that. Uh, I, I think that might be a big ask. That's a, an incredible jump over what he did last year. Um, is there somebody on this roster that can put up a six? Maybe, but I don't think it's Ellie De La Cruz. I think any of these I think guys CES would be hard pressed to get to six. We talked about six wars is a, is a MVP type season. Um, mm -hmm. I think some of these guys will get four and above. They'll get above all-star level for war this year. Six might be a big ask, but Hey, I mean, you said be bold and we're being bold. So, you know, I'll give you that. You, you, you shot your shot. Um, Ellie De La Cruz. Um, we're going to be on Ellie watch all season long. I think on this war, since it's a cumulative stat, hey. we will, um, we will take a look. And I think that, you know, there's some other candidates, but again, like the idea is everything's got to go right to get a six war. I mean, you got to be a really good player. Uh, and unless you're like Mike Trout or unless you're Joey Votto from a few years ago, you don't really fall out of bed and just get six war. You got to do a lot. And I feel like the Reds have been working. I feel like we've seen some guys working. Could Matt McClain get there? Maybe if he's healthy. Could Noel V. Marte get there? Maybe if he's healthy. These guys have the ability to play well at bat and in the field, which makes them the kind of candidates that I'm looking at here. I don't think Will Benson could get there. I don't think Jake Fraley could get there. I don't know that TJ, I think we saw TJ Friedel's ceiling, and I'm fine with yeah. that. If he's a three and a half, if he's a three and a half, four win player for his career, then he's a good player. That's fine. But I, I, I think that you definitely have to hone in on a couple of guys. I think that the Reds have it. I'm not saying that it's Ellie that's going to get the six wins. I think that he is the best case to do this. But I think that the Reds will have a six-win player in 2024. All right. That was pretty bold. Mine is bold. It's not as bold. Um, I, I tried to rein myself in a little bit. But you mentioned I try to go less no, scorch earth next time yeah, we do this. <laughs> you, you, this, this, this probably, uh, if, if that's your biggest of your bold predictions, we'll be all right. That's that's a pretty good one. That's a, that's a pretty big swing there, Jeffrey. But where I'm going to go is you mentioned my guy, Noel B. Marte. And I am looking forward to a big, big season from him. Uh, I think that when it's all said and done, he is going to hit 20 plus home runs. He is going to steal 20 plus bases. And in spite of our show saying individual accolades will be hard to come by, Noel V. Marte will win rookie of the year. I like that. And in fact, um, I have a pool with some friends. Uh, we all kind of go in on some tickets together to go to Reds games. Um, shout out to Dave Pemberton. He used to write for the Lockdown Reds blog site. I thought, uh, he's part I thought of that he only, I thought you guys only pulled together to buy tickets to Reba McIntyre concerts. Well, every so often, um, only in April. Uh, but when it comes to Noel Vimerte winning the rookie of the year, I agree with you. I think that he will do that. That's a prediction I made on multiple different cases. Many people have seen that. So I, I 100% agree with you. He has shown the one thing that translates through slumps and through, you know, when you're on the peak, when you're doing great is the fact that he has good plate discipline. We mm -hmm. want Ellie to have good plate discipline. No, Alvy Marte has it and yep. he has power and he has speed and he can do all those things. And we've already in most cases heard, but we've already heard him making some good plays at third base in cactus league play. So he's got the glove. And he's got the yarn. So I can see this happening. Plus, we're talking about this, and I kind of broke this down over at InsideTheReds.com. Make sure you bookmark that site today. Um, 
over the last 33 years, over under nine and a half times a pitcher has won the NL Rookie of the Year. Over under nine and a half pitchers to win the NL Rookie of the Year in the last 33 years. I know the answer one to this, so it's not a one game. and a half. Wait, uh, over under is nine and a half. Oh, over under is nine and a half. Under. Yeah, yeah. Yes, under. Because nine, nine pitchers have won the NL Rookie of the Year. Yamamoto, Yosh- Yoshinomu Yamamoto for the Dodgers is the favorite to win the NL Rookie of the Year. It doesn't happen that often. And we've already heard, and, and if you check out our, our friends over at Locked On Dodgers, they're already talking about him tipping pitches and, and a little bit of worry about that. So does his delivery need change? Does his mechanics need change? Whatever. I'm looking at Noel V. Marte, and I, I'm with you. I agree with you. You know, much like we talked about uh, on our last bold predictions, uh, talking about Matt McClain, uh, the same would need to hold true for Noel V. Marte as well. Um, not only does he have to perform well, but he's going to have to be put out there. The social media team is going to have to do a good job of keeping his highlights coming, uh, and, and they will. Uh, they do a great job over there on the red social media team. Uh, but the team's going to have – I think the team is going to have to more so than ever before make a concerted effort to get these guys out there. Get them in onto shows like Foul Territory. Get them onto MLB Network. Get them onto whoever they can get on a national stage and, and just keep running them out there. Uh, but I think looking at Noel V. Marte, and I didn't just pull this number 20 plus out of the air. Um, he's never hit more than 19. He hit 19 home runs in a ball and a little bit less as he moved up. But what we've seen, as you mentioned, is his plate discipline has gotten so good that I think now that he got a taste last season and can come into the season knowing what to expect, knowing how things work, knowing how to act, knowing what to do. He's going to be comfortable. He's going to be in a favorable spot in the lineup where he's going to be protected a little bit. Guys are going to have to pitch to him and he's going to get some opportunities. So I think 20 plus home runs, it's if you got to squint for it, it's a little bit of the lofty and it's probably, you know, bolder than saying he's going to steal 20 bases because I think he can do that easily. Uh, And then Mm -hmm. if he does those two things, I think that equates to serious consideration for rookie of the year. Um, I don't know that this is as big a swing as your six war guy. Um, It's a big swing, but I don't think it's as big a swing as your six war guy. Coming up. I think we are set with a 13 position players. The Reds will leave Goodyear with. I'll tell you why coming up next. Before I tell you about that, I want to tell you about another one of today's sponsors. And that is prize picks. Football season might be over, but we are full on into the stretch run of college basketball, and we're nearing the stretch run of NBA basketball as well. And whether it's tournament season or the NBA playoffs, there's no shortage of high stakes basketball moments this time of year. That's why you got to get into it with Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app, where you can turn your hoops knowledge into serious cash. Plus, you can win up to 100 times your money right now on prize picks with as little as four correct picks. You can turn $10 into 1000 with NBA, NHL, and college basketball entries today. In fact, you can also look at some uh, MLB season stats. You just pick more or less on those stats, and you make your money. Put together a couple ones. I got two for you right here. 100 green season strikeout total is set at 189 and a half. I think you're smashing more on that. Plus, they also have an over-under on total multi-homer games for Ellie De La Cruz at one and a half. Seriously? I'm smashing more on that as well. I could easily see him having two multi-homer games. Smashing more on both of those. Download the app today and use code LOCKEDONMLB for a first deposit match of up to $100. Again, download the Prize Picks app and use the code LOCKEDONMLB for up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Pick more or pick less. It's that easy. In between episodes, you can follow us on Twitter, on, on X. You can follow me at Jeff Carr with three Fs. You can follow Steve at S. Offenbaker with two Fs. And you can follow the show. There's no Fs in that. Plus, make sure you join the Lockdown Reds Discord community. We've got a lot of great folks talking Reds baseball in there. Got a link in the description of today's episode. We'd be happy to have you. And go bookmark InsideTheReds.com. 
Got a lot of great stuff up there. Wrote a little bit as to why I don't believe the Reds need to sign Joey Votto. And we've got the ultimate guide to the 2024 Cincinnati Reds, breaking down the position groups like starting pitching, bullpen, infield, outfield, and catchers. Um, make sure you go check that out today. It's inside the Reds.com. All right. The Reds have been trying to figure out this whole 26th man on the roster deal, and they should look no further than Stuart Fairchild. And, and I get it. This is something where we have to kind of discern a little bit. I'm not saying that his spring training stats are going to be what he's going to do in the regular season. Not saying that at all, but coming into spring training, we knew there was a competition for the final bench spot. We knew it was a competition between him, between Jose Barrero, Josh Harrison. They added a couple of other guys, but I never really thought Tony Kemp or Mike Ford were in on this. Nick Martini also probably in this a little bit. But it's Stuart Fairchild. I mean, Stuart Fairchild has had the kind of spring that a player fighting for a roster spot would dream of having. The kind of hits that he's had, he's had so much power. It seems like every other time I turn around, he's getting an extra base hit. He's played center field very well, and I think that that is a key component of this. The 26th man has to be able to play center field, which for me meant that you're really just narrowing it down between Jose Barrero and Stuart Fairchild. And it's not for lack of performance of Jose Barrero. I just think Stuart Fairchild has looked so good. Plus, he has the tag, right? The 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 whole, you know, tagline that you want when it comes to spring training. Because the other day on the radio broadcast of the Reds and the A's game, Jim Day talked about how how much Stuart Fairchild has worked to get stronger over the offseason, and he showed up to camp in the best shape of his life. Best shape of his life. Look at that. We got like three weeks left until opening day. And that's like the serious, the first serious reference to best shape of their life that we really talked about. We've made it, people. We've made it. But I think when you add that into the fact that we've seen Stuart Fairchild before, we know that he's he's kind of the replacement level player, right? Like he's not going to be that guy that wins you the World Series. But he's also not going to be that guy that loses you a playoff spot. I think he's exactly what the Reds need at the end of the bench. Plus, I I just really think that the work that he has put in is paying off based on what we're seeing on the field right now. And you look at how the rest of the roster is shaping out. I mean, we, we found out David Bell said that Jonathan India will play in Friday's game. He's ready to go. Matt McClain is said to be slated for game action this weekend. They didn't say Saturday or Sunday, but we'll keep an eye out for that, see exactly when Matt McClain is back in the games. But the position player side of the 26-man roster is coming together. Like we said, there's only one spot that was really up for grabs, and I think that Stuart Fairchild has earned that spot. Speaking of which, three weeks left until opening day. Let's transition a little bit because that means 21 days. The best number 21 in Cincinnati Reds history? I mean, do we even really have to talk about this? It's Sean Casey. Easily. And really, it's it's kind of funny because this was a number that really didn't take off until the 80s. I I think there I could hear an argument for Paul O'Neill, but I still think that Sean Casey had a better career as a Cincinnati Reds player than did Paul O'Neill. They both played for eight years as a Red. But Sean Casey just did so much better. As a Red in those eight seasons, he hit over 300 for the entirety of his tenure here. Paul O'Neill was like 260 or something like that. Still respectable, but nowhere near as good as Sean Casey. Plus, we will always have 1999 Sean Casey. You know what I'm talking about. 332 batting average. If you don't know what I'm talking about, Sean Casey hit 332 in 151 games. 500 and I, I was trying to look this up and I just uh, was trying to memorize it. 594 at bats in 1999. Sean Casey hit 332. That's absolutely phenomenal. He was an all star that year. He was an all star a couple of years as a red. But he that was the only year he actually got MVP votes, which just blows my mind. And he was 14th. 
it was the same year that Chipper Jones was doing his thing, and everybody loved Chipper Jones, so pfft, whatever. I, I think that Sean Casey should have gotten more recognition. In fact, I don't know, and, and, and this might be a, a conversation to have with some, some other folks, but and this could be blasphemy to say this, but did Sean Casey have a better year than Greg Vaughn that year? I think it's close. I mean, Greg Vaughn hit more home runs by a lot. But Sean Casey had a batting average of almost 100 points higher. I, anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. Sean Casey, best number 21 in Reds history. And like I said, it's it's post-Big Red Machine that this number kind of took off. You had Paul O'Neill in the 80s, Deion Sanders in the 90s, and then really just the last like 15 years, or the last 20 years, you had Scott Hatterberg, Todd Frazier, Michael Lorenzen, and now Hunter Green. I mean, you got to go back, uh, you know, with all due respect to relief pitcher Tom Hall during the Big Red Machine days, there really wasn't a lot of number 21s. In fact, our buddy Ken uh, at Obscure X Reds on Twitter uh, would love to have some of these guys' jerseys. <laughs> There's some obscure names that have worn the number 21, you know, pre Big Red Machine era. Nino Escalera played one major league season for the Cincinnati Reds, and he had 69 at-bats. Nice. You know what? That's where we're going to end today's podcast. Thanks so much for checking out today's Locked on Reds podcast. If you are not subscribed, make sure that you do so. Love to have you aboard as an everyday or as we move into the season. We are now to the point that we can say we are less than three weeks away from opening day. Ugh. Can't wait. Section 139. Gonna be there. Gonna be pumped. It's gonna be, it's gonna be a day. It's gonna be a year. I can't wait to be at the ballpark. It's gonna be so much fun. And we're gonna be all over everything at the ballpark here on the Lockdown Reds podcast. We're gonna be talking Reds all year, every single day. So make sure that you follow us if you're not already doing so. And by the way, every day is coming up tomorrow on the show. We got another Aloha live edition of the podcast coming up with Steve and a special guest. I will not be here, but Steve will be. He'll be back and he'll be with you talking Reds because that's what we do. We're locked on Reds every single day.